Shabbat Shalom Yasharala. I am going to go ahead and share screen. Thank you for joining me on the Feast of Trumpets, Holy Convocation Gathering. In the name of our Mashiach, doing the commandments and feast days of our Heavenly Father. And let's blow the trumpets at the new moon, at the full moon, on his feast day. So this is a, we all got a visual of the new moon right here. I took this myself last night. So all together, Yasharala, let's blow the trumpets. I know y'all watching or hearing the re recording or whatnot may not be able to hear it because it's so loud, but I blew my trumpet, blow yours as well. So this is our sighting right here of the new full moon on Yom Teruah. And um, I've mentioned this over and over again in my videos on the luminary luminaries that's associated with the calendar that some confusion that you see the sign of a full moon happening on the 29th of September this year. And you'd be like, oh, why Yom Teru is not on that day? We have to remember the evening declares what the morning will become. We have to wait on the sign, the sign of the full moon which tells us what the following day will be. So we saw the sighting of the full moon, and it's telling us that today upon sunrise is Feast of Trumpets, a.k.a. Yom Teruah. All right. So before we get started, let's get a prayer in. All together, Yasharala. Heavenly Abba, Shabbat Shalom, Yom, Happy Yom Teruah, Baruch Hashem Haya. Thank you for allowing us to be here, Abba. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate this day that you have made so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. Thank you for providing us with this fellowship and food in our tummies on this day. We understand that we are spoiled in this life. We have been given many things that we will not take it for granted, such as this day and giving you praise and making sure this day sets apart from the other days. Because this is a moed, a appointed time that you have given us. And um, once again, we thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence. Please honor this fellowship, protect this line. And... Um, Shabbat Shalom, Baha Shem, Yasha, Hamashiach. Amen. Once again, happy Feast of Trumpets, family. You see the background here. This is actually... My shofar, this gold, and this is my wife's shofar. And once again, here is the new moon of the seventh month of the year. Starting off this study with uh, just different ways the scriptures portray the timings of blowing the trumpets starting off in numbers 10 numbers uh 10 talks much more even from verse 1 about trumpets but we're gonna just hit verse 9 and 10 here if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Adon your Allahim, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. And in the days of your rejoicings, and in your salamines, 
and at the beginning of your mumps, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and they shall be for a good memorial to you before the Adon your Elohim. For Satan shall be troubled at the sound of your jubile notes. I am Haya your Elohim. And uh, this part right here, uh, this is actually the Targums. Uh, it says KJV. That is a typo. I apologize. The sound for Satan shall be troubled at the sound of your jubil notes. Woo! The voice of the Most High, as we're about to see here, is uh, the sound of the jubil notes of shofar. And then uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 50, verse 16. Then the sons of Aaron shouted. They sounded the trumpets. We'll see that shouted. And uh, a trumpet blast are very similar words used in scripture. Of hammered work, they made a great noise to be heard for the remembrance before the Most High. Isaiah 58, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So when you shout, when you cry out to the Most High, it mimics the sound of a trumpet to him. And show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. So we see in multiple ways. We see for war, we can sound the alarm. We're seeing for feast days and new moons, we blow with the trumpet. The uh, noise of remembrance of the Most High to sound this trumpet then. And then a awakening call to your people out of their transgressions as well. And all of these come to Revelation 1 conclusion here, 10 and 12. John speaking, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the Aleph, uh, the Tav, Aleph and the Tav, the first and the last. So this is, Mimicking the voice of the word and the most high, the trumpet blast. We're going to see more and more ways the trumpets are used throughout scripture in this study. This is just a list of few to show how much importance this trumpet blast means to not just the most high, not just to the sun, but to us as a people. When we blow the trumpet, we put fear into Hasatan and we let him know that we know what time it is because he has worked so hard to steer us astray. All right. Just looking into the Strong's Concordance, these are the two main words used for a trumpet blast here. A shout, we see the first Hebrew 73, 21 here at the top, Ruah. And we see that it's used for shout, noise, alarm, cry, trumpet, and uh, smart here. That's a little outlier there. But just like the passages we just read in the scriptures, Ruah is one of the Hebrew words that we use here. And then same thing we see we just read it in context of scripture now this is just a strong definition of the same idea blow an alarm cry make a joyful noise a shout a shout and trumpet a shout with your mouth a war cry all these different ways all are mimicking the voice and the authority of our creator And then we have Teruah. That's where you get Yom Teruah, the Hebrew um, way of saying Feast of Trumpets. And see, we see Teruah, same idea, just a different Hebrew word for uh, alarm of war, blast, shout of joy, etc. So it means various of calls from all the different aspects of his, um, our walk in his kingdom. 
We listen to his voice and we follow him. And his voice is a what? A shofar blast, a ram's horn blast, shout to his people. That is his voice. So is it very important to decipher his voice from another voice? What do I mean? Because we have, the Hasatan has very close impersonations of everything that the Most High does. So that goes even in line with the shofar you use, the trumpet. This is, the shofar is a part of war, as we see in Joshua 6. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, so the trumpet is a ram's horn, all the people shall shout with a great shout. You see what they did there just in this one verse. We just read that uh, shout and the blast of a ram's horn mimic the same thing for the heavenly kingdom. So if you don't have a ram's horn, what, what do they do here? Everyone that has a ram's horn, you blow it, you blast it, and everybody else, you give a shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So Hasatan has a false version of everything. Make sure we get ram's horns. This is a kudu horn. You know what a kudu horn is off of? What animal it comes off of? It's not a ram. It's a bull. Nowhere in scripture is this supported. Nowhere. So, just want to make sure we we worship, we, we are here in the flesh, but we're worshiping, worshiping him in spirit. And worshiping him in spirit is doing it in truth. And there's no truth in doing it in a the wrong way with a horn that is pulled off of a kudu bull and not a ram. I have a short TikTok video on this. But this is just that in a nutshell. This is synagogue of Satan. And it, make, and it makes sense. Think about this, Yasharala. We just read that the jubile notes, which mimics the voice of the Most High, puts fear into Hasatan. So why would Hasatan's people blow a ram's horn when they put fear into him? So he got them to blow kudu horns, right? Because this doesn't mimic the voice of the Most High. So let's do things according to scripture, line by line. And I think it's interesting. Yes, Hasatan uses horns as well, but he also uses sirens. We see it on police vehicles, emergency vehicles like the ambulance right here, and even tornado sirens. And that's a very interesting connection here. Listen to this video. There is uh, one little curse word in here. I apologize. One little curse word. It's the best video I could find. But sirens are mermaids, as we read in Enoch 19. And this is not the little mermaid like a good being. And Uriel uh, said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women. And their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind. It shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment, which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall come, become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision of the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. So they call, they have emergency vehicles in uh, a lot of different ways they use sirens instead of horns. And go figure, right? So let's listen to this video of 
what a siren because this this video i'm about to show you i mean man it seems pretty real this is out in the ocean in the dark ocean and uh this is where mermaids reside right ocean is a big mystery so let's listen to what sirens may sound like that mimics the emergency vehicle sounds what are those trails called what's something swimming fast and i need that water Something's swimming real fast underneath that water. I hear him. Where's he at? What the fuck is that noise, bro? What is that noise? Where are you? This is crazy. I heard it. I heard it, I hear it. Oh my God. But uh, so they sound like a, like a, a high pitch singing, screaming type deal. And when it, you put it repetitive, it sounds like an ambulance. I mean, you get it. You get the gist. All right. Enough of this. Let's get back on what this day is about. Just showing you how Satan is always playing his games right in front of our eyes. For those that have eyes to see. All right. So, like I said, let's get on what this day is about now. Feast of Trumpets can be found for the instructions in Leviticus 23, and then it's also mentioned in Numbers 29. So Leviticus 23, 24 through 25. Speak unto the children of Yasharala, saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. And ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High. By the end of this study, we're going to have our head wrapped around. A, uh, we see so many different ways trumpets is used in scripture. But this day is way more specific, right? It's not just a vague, hey, trumpets. Even though I see, you know, we see a lot of stories that have trumpets in it. Let's find the, the meaning of the trumpets on this day, though. Because not just any and all meanings uh, that is associated with trumpets means it's all associated with Yom Teruah. And then we have that precept in Numbers 29 in the seventh month on the first day of the month, Holy Convocation blowing the trumpets. And then we have a story directly connected with Yom Teruah, which is Psalms 81. I did a full line by line study of Psalms 81. If you want to watch that, it's on my YouTube. Simple as that. So in this story, in verse 3 and 4, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel, a rule of Allahim of Jacob. What's the statute for Israel? Hello. Feast of Trumpets. This is the statue for Israel. We're, we're living it right now. And this is all of what Psalms 81, and I prove it thoroughly. Because I'm not going to do a full Psalms 81 study right here. I have a line-by-line -line video for that. But we talk about it and prove thoroughly that the new moon at the full moon on our feast day is talking about Yom Teruah. Because this story is directly related to Joseph being crowned overseer of Egypt, which is foreshadowing of the coming Messiah, which is one of the big memorials that this day is associated with. So before we get into the story, I just want to give a quick a quick recap. If this is your first job tour, and make sure you're doing it right. So we should blow the trumpet. Or have a shout of praise at the moonrise and then the following day, right? It's a Sabbath. 
So we should have a feast with no food specified. We don't work, we don't buy or sell, and we have a holy convocation, which is a gathering. And we give our offerings, such as in Psalms 119, 108, Hebrews 13, 15, and 1 Peter 2 and 5, that we give free will offerings, we give offerings of praise, and we, we build up our spiritual houses as offerings of temples to give praise to our Heavenly Father as well. That's how we give our offerings. I get people all the time asking about offerings. And you're just like, we don't do that. And you would have to be a priest to do that anyway. And you would have to have an altar to do that. And all of that would have to be sanctified and anointed. So please don't do that or you'll just be butchering scripture. All right. That's how we give our offering nowadays. All right. So that's in a nutshell. That's Yom Teruah. Don't have a lot of rules to it. It's a Shabbat with blowing of trumpets. All right. Now let's get more into Psalms 81. So we should, like I said, we should blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, for this is a statue for Israel, a rule for Jacob, the Allahim of Jacob. We're going to first touch on the moon. The moon is a pretty vital part of this. Talk about, I feel like I talk about the, the new moon and the full moon so much, but it's it's that much a part of uh, the journey and the message, right? So Enoch 78, uh, The let's talk about the new moon. During all the period during, during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during 14 days. Her light is accomplished in the heaven. And when she is illumined throughout, her light is accomplished full in heaven. On the first day, she is called the new moon. So we see like back-to-back -back verse right here. There's only one translation that makes it seem like there's something in between here. But we see that it talks about a full moon. And then it, the very next says, on the first day, she is called a new moon. For all that day lies, rises upon her. Literally, that be, that's it. People think, oh, that's talking about the light, the first light coming on her. No, they're saying light is a, on all of her. That's what the, verse 12 is implying. Then verse 13 is still talking about a full moon. You have verse 11, verse 12, and verse 13. Never leaves the understanding that we're talking about a, a fully illumined, illumined full moon. Verse 13. She becomes full moon exactly on the day. When the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night, and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. And we see right here, I have what it would look like on flat earth. And even though in this uh, image here, it doesn't have the moon glowing, because I guess it doesn't want to confuse folks which one is the sun and which one's the moon, but we have to understand this entire earth, the circle, they are opposite of each other, opposite. And if the moon is fully lit, that means the entire earth is covered in light. There's just a greater light, and there is an inferior light. But that doesn't change that the entire earth during full moons, the earth is all covered in light. How amazing is that? And then Enoch 41 just gives understanding to the, the value of light. For the sun changes often for a blessing or a curse. In the course of the path of the moon is light to the righteous and darkness to the sinners in the name of the Most High. Who made a separation between the light and the darkness and divided the spirits of men and strengthened the righteous. Oops. Hold on, my tab has got this part covered in the name of his righteousness. There we go. And then we go over just uh, adding you. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. I am uh, going to maximize understanding always. So we go to Genesis. 116 over here, and this is just in the Targum translation. And it says, and afterwards, this is after he made the moon and the sun. If you understand, if you've been following me a while, you know that I 
talk about the meaning of the heavens, that the story is written in the heavens. This isn't astrology. This is literal scripture. And afterwards, the moon recited against the sun a false report, and she was diminished. So the moon, which represents his people, the bride, was diminished when sin came into the world. And obviously, this is uh, talking about the origin story of Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. And the sun was appointed to be the greater light to rule the day, and the moon to be the inferior light to rule the night and the stars. So I just want to put understanding here. Well, we, we will talk about what happens on Yom Teruah when his people are brought up onto the mount and they are become, they become like the angels. They are given eternal life and some are a part of the 144,000. And this happens on the day where the sun and the moon are across from each other. So my point is that this is symbolic of the entire earth being filled with light. And when we add in Enoch 41, that he said, who made a separation between the light and the darkness and divided the spirits of men. This is exactly what Yom Teruah is about. This is the day he divides the spirits of men and he takes up his elect upon his mount. And his light, well, at least to his people, will be covering them across the entire earth. All right, Psalms 81, back on Psalms 81. So we went over the, the beginning of it. We blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day. And then for the next verse, uh, well, next couple of verses, for this is a statute for Yasharala, a law for the Allahim of Jacob, a testimony for Yehoshaphat. He ordained it when he went forth over the land of Egypt, when I understood a language that I had not known. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Our strength make joyful noise. Make joyful noise unto Allahim of Yaakov. Yom Teruah. All of this is connected to Yom Teruah. And just like in my Psalms 81 study, we went over that Yehoshaphat. Is only used one time because this is showing a connection verse that is found in the book of Jasher. And just to see, show the similarities of this story with Messiah and Joseph stepping into his position of being second on the throne of Egypt is the same idea of the coming of the Son of Man. From uh, Joseph receiving a new name to Messiah receiving a new name, Revelation 19. And then I saw heaven open. The day of the Lord is what we're reading here. And behold, a white horse, the one sitting on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and make war. And his eyes are like a flame of fire. And on his head are many diadems, crowns. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of Elohim. And we're going to see that the whole memorial of Yom Teruah is all about the day of the Adon, his second coming. And we and that's what everything and what we're covering in Psalm 81 is about. It's a memorial of the blowing of trumpets for this day that we're reading about in Revelation. And then, the, like I said, the connection story in the book of Jasher, chapter 41. In thy name, no more shall be called Joseph, but uh, whatever how you want to say that Egyptian name, shall be thy name. Thou shall be second to me. And this, I love this because this is also showing that the what the Messiah has always said when he was here amongst men, that his father is greater. The story of Joseph is confirming that he is second to the throne. He, the, the, the Messiah doesn't replace the father. Messiah, Yasha HaMashiach, when he's here in the new millennium, once again amongst mankind, 
He is in position in the authority of our creator. But that doesn't mean he replaces him. Second to me, according to thy word, shall be all the affairs of my government. According to whose word? Joseph's word, just like our Mashiach will come in. And, and at thy word shall my people go out and come in. This name in for the Egyptian, meaning for this Egyptian name, literally means salvation or savior of the age. If this isn't shadows of Messiah, I don't know what is. And we see this is, uh, oh, this is just a precept of Jasher 49. It's also written in Genesis. And then we see that in Matthew 1, she will bear a son. And you shall call his name Yasha, for he will save his people from their sins. Connecting the Savior and salvation name given to Joseph here. Continuing. Jasher 49. As we just read about him giving the government, verse 28, do you see this man whom the king has chosen to be his second? All the affairs of government shall be regulated by him. Man, so Messiah is second to our creator and nobody, nobody is in between them, right? It is the creator and everything has been given authority to our Mashiach upon his return. All the affairs of the government shall be regulated by him. And he that transgresses his orders or that does not bow down before him to the ground shall die. For he rebels against the king and his second. And this prophecy is seen in Isaiah 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Allahim, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government in peace, there shall be no end eternal. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with government, I mean with just, just, judgment and with justice. From henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Most High of hosts will perform this. And in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, we see that, that um, out of the land of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. The prophecy of Isaiah 9 and the foreshadowing of Joshua 49, verse 28. And then, all things are given unto him, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. All things are delivered unto me by my father. And no man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father save the son. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Unbelievable connections from the testimony and the foreshadowing of Joseph's life be in parallel to Messiah's second coming. It's undeniable <laughs> for those that have eyes to see. And here's the hero, of course. All right. that right. We're going to stop there from, for Psalms 81. If you want any more insight, there's a full study. There's much more to Psalms 81. But this that all just gives understanding that it's foreshadowing of what's to come upon the end of days. And Matthew 24 is the chapter that Mashiach speaks of about the end of days. And in verse 30, And then shall appear the son, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. We'll see that this is a part of the book of Revelation. The last trumpet is when all of this uh, occurs. 
And this great trumpet blast has been prophesied from the beginning, Isaiah 27, 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship Haya in the holy mount at Jerusalem. So we went over in the beginning the different, many different ways the trumpet is can be used. So far, we see that this is a trumpet of glory, excitement for his people. But we'll, we'll see in it also as the tribes of the earth mourn when they see the Son of Man. It also can be a shofar blast terror and war for the enemy. At least specifically speaking of on Yom Teruah. So we got joy, re rejoice for if you're on his side. Mourning in terror if you're not on his side. The two biggest ways that the uh, <laughs> people, depending on what side you're on, will take the sound of the trumpet. And then if you if you're a non-believer in the word, you will be in terror. If you deny Messiah, you will be in terror. If you are his elect, you will be in great joy. And if you are still on earth and you're not his elect, understand that you still have a chance of salvation, endure to the end. And in Psalms 98, make a joyful noise to Haya, all the earth, break forth into joyful song and sing praises. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the king, the Adon. Haya, Bahashem, Yeshaya. I think the earth will quake on that last trump. It, it will go, that, that sound will tremble the earth into an earthquake. That's why when you see over and over again at that great day, earthquakes come upon the earth on that day, because I think it's going to be in one, one moment, you'll hear the ooh, and everything starts quaking. It's happening simultaneously. You're not going to know what hit them. So just like if uh, if an earthquake happens or any natural disaster, we get great. We get it, our, our bodies, everything about ourselves get in terror. We get scared because we don't know what's going to happen. Imagine that times like a thousand, right? Imagine the earth when the last trumpet occurs. Continuing with that Tara, Joel 2 1. I'm going to tell you, uh, there's a couple of chapters that's directly talking about Yom Teruah. And that is uh, Psalms 81 and Joel chapter 2 is directly talking about Yom Teruah. So we already went over Psalms 81. We're going to now. About to get into Joel chapter 2. So Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm. So we see the alarm in my holy mountain. This is going to, this is an alarm for war. That's what Yom Teruah was, the second coming is about. That's why it says, let all the inhabitants of the earth land tremble for the day of the Adon cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Yom Teruah, I've seen, you know, everyone, you, you have our connection verses. And there's a lot of different ways about the trumpet blast. But the trumpet blast is about, oh, Yom Teruah? Like I said, you have joy for his people but it, and terror for those that are not his people. But for either side, that horn means war. That's consistent.
for his people and Babylon. Either side, when you hear the trumpet, no, the day of the Lord is here and war is amongst us. Psalms 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto Allah with the voice of a trumpet. For Haya, most high, is tremble, terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah. Alahim is gone up with a shout. Haya with a sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to Alahim. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For Alahim is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with, under, with understanding. Alahim reigneth over the heaven, over the heathen. Alahim sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the Alahim of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto the Most High. He is greatly exalted. Psalms 47 is one of those uh, chapters too. That's, it seems like it's directly talking about one event in one day. The day of the second coming, which is on Yom Teruah. 1 Thessalonians 4. For this we say unto you by the word of the Adon, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Adon shall not prevent them which are asleep. For Yasha himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Haya. And the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yasha in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Adon. That's what I was talking about when we were, when we were looking at the moon and how the moon and the sun is opposite of each other. And when they're both fully illumined, the whole earth has light. It's all covered in light. And look at us. We mimic the moon. We're not mimic the moon. The moon represents us in the heavens of the storybook. And we're going up into the air, the firmament. And we will be changed in the air. And we will be made a light. See what I was trying to connect there? <laughs> How the, the moon is full on the day that our light will be made full. You get what I mean? His people light isn't made full on, on the on tabernacles. His light is poured into us and made full when we become like him on Yom Teruah. That's the day that our light is made full and we become new beings. That's what all of this is about. We, we, we got terror for the unbelievers. We have rejoiced for his elect, his people. And on this day, we will become like him. We will become light bearers. We will be light. We will be changed forever. And then there will become, then war will be amongst us immediately. And we see one of the most famous stories where trumpets is used. We, we touched on it a little bit earlier, but I want to go into the details of this story in the book of Joshua of the walls of Jericho. Chapter six, let's read now. Let's gather more understanding of how much this event alone mimics the book of Revelation. Now Jericho, uh, uh, put, put Babylon in Jericho's place now. All right. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And Hayah said unto Joshua, 
See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And let's remember, let's like I said, let's wrap this in the understanding of the creation story and book of Revelation. Six days. Uh, one day in heaven is a thousand days on earth. Oh, my bad. Uh, a, a thousand years. Excuse me. A, a one day in heaven is a thousand years on earth. So six days can mean 6,000 years. Follow me. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Revelation 8.1. The seven angels hold the seven trumpets. In the seventh day, uh, beginning of the seventh day, beginning of day seven is the 7,000 year reign. And the beginning of day seven is Yom Teruah, the second coming, right? Ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And verse 16, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, which we see in Revelation eleven fifteen. 15. And Joshua said unto the people, shout, for Hayah has given you the city. This is why Yom Teruah is a more memorial of blowing of trumpets and that we should give a shout. This entire chapter in Joshua 6 is literally mimicking the story of creation of the trumpets being blasted to him taking over the city and, and earth for the millennium kingdom. And his people in uh, com compassing it and taking over it and winning the battle of what we call Armageddon. And then I just got a little picture here so you can see the 6,000 years. And right at the beginning of the seventh year, or the, the last thousand years, the last day, is that seventh trumpet. So much more connections. Let's continue here. Continuing on the trumpets now, the connection of Joshua and the trumpets. In the book of Revelation, we see in Revelation 7, uh, 1 through 3, or this is actually just typo here. This should just be 7, 3. Do, do. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the service of our Allah in their foreheads. So before the trumpets begin, which is him sieging, as we just read in Jericho, the walls of Jericho, this is when they start about to siege Babylon. So before they start to wear out Babylon and to put all these plagues upon Babylon, he marks his people so his people will not be touched with these trumpet blasts that we see in the book of Revelation chapter 8 and 9. And that's similar to the story in the book of Exodus that he had, his people were still in Egypt while the plagues were happening. I believe that's still going to be going on during the trumpets. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And that is when at the beginning of the seventh day, the millennium kingdom where we will be made eternal beings, those that will be his elect, we shall be changed. He always protects his children, always. Continuing. In the book of Revelation, chapter 11, and the seventh angel sounded, the seventh angel, this is the, the last trump, is the seventh trump, 
which is by the seventh angel, which I was talking about the seven priests in the story of Joshua, walls of Jericho. There were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Don and of his Mashiach. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Allahim on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped Allahim saying, we give thee thanks. O Adan Allahim Almighty, which art was in art to come, because thou has taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou should have give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name small and great, and should have destroyed them which destroy the earth. So we see that what is the reward? That we shall be changed incorruptible. That we will be given new bodies, angelic bodies. That is the reward that is spoken about here in Revelation. Now finishing in verse 19. And the temple of Allah he was opened in heaven, and there was seen his temple, the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hell. That's why I said all of this is what I was speaking about earlier. When you hear that trumpet blast, this stuff is going to be happening simultaneously. Lightnings, voices, thunderings, earthquakes, hell, all these different natural disasters that probably the world is going to try to blame on something like CERN or HARP. I feel like we too much work nowadays. I feel like we blame too many disasters on harp or some, some conspiracy theorists will say um, CERN, which I don't believe CERN does much of anything like NASA doesn't do much of anything, but make sure we have discernment when we're going to give Hasatan credit over natural disasters, because we're in the last days. And we're in the days of the ceilings um, and the trumpets. So a lot of these natural disasters is going to be the most high. Don't give Hasatan too much credit. All right? Really just think about that. And there's another story that mimics these sounds. That's in Revelation at the second coming. We see this in Exodus 19. This is this is during the time of Pentecost, Shavuot. But I'm just showing you the connection versus when the authority and the power of the sun is in the presence of man. This is what it looks like. It doesn't matter what story and time frame. Reading, now therefore, if ye will obey my voice and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people of the earth all excuse me all the people that was in the camp trembled so this is during uh shavuot but this is what it looks like when you're in the presence of the son of man and that's why it looks similar here to revelation 11 the coming of the son of man and to just being in the presence of the son of man right here in exodus 19 this is his presence is what I'm showing you. This is just his authority and his power upon man that none of us can stand. And that's why every knee will bow. You won't have a choice. You will be made so little. You'll be like nothing to him. And many will be judged as nothing and thrown into the lake of fire. Sadly, but this is just the way he has ordained it to be.
Continue in verse 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at uh, neither part of the mount, and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because Hayah descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded, the voice of the word, long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke, and Elohim answered him by a voice, which is a trumpet. And another connection here, we see that and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that this happened. But that's interesting. Because if we go with the timeline, as we just went over here, a thousand years is one day. Well, they have this, the cross here, the first coming. On the third day, right, we have one, two, and in the morning of the third day. Look at there. You see how so many stories, My, I don't know how many of you watched the gospel study I have. The gospel is to show you that everything is a foreshadowing of the kingdom of Yasha. Everything is about Messiah. And so just in these stories, you see that in Joshua, the walls of Jericho is all about the coming of the son of man in plain sight. To even in Exodus 19, his authority and him coming on the third day is foreshadowing of the coming of the Son of Man in plain sight. Over and over again, everything is connected to the Son of Man, to the Son of Elohim, the only begotten, the Lamb of Elohim, Yasha Hamashiach. Everything's connected to him and what he's coming to do. Continuing. All right. A re Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. This means, this doesn't mean fleshly virgins. This means spiritual virgins. You have repented. You have been baptized, washed away from your sins. And now you are not practicing fornication with the great whore Babylon. In a nutshell, if you don't know what that verse four was implying. All right, continuing. These are they which follow the lamb with ever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Elohim and to the Lamb. Remember, the first fruits mimicking the first fruits of Messiah. Messiah was a first fruits because he was the first resurrected from the dead. What event is the resurrection of the dead happening? We read this already, right? The dead shall rise first at the last trump. So the first fruits rises and is called. On Yom Teruah. Now we're back in Joel tw uh, chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Haya shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Haya has said, in the remnant whom Haya shall call. And so this is all about his people. This is all happening on Yom Teruah. That's why I said Joel chapter 2 is all about Yom Teruah. His people being called and changed on and being the first fruits given eternal life upon Mount Zion. Which we also saw that, I mean, that was another uh, foreshadowing of Exodus chapter 19 as well, that these priests, the elders and the priests was called to come 
to uh, Mount Zion. I mean, Mount Sinai at this story as well. After uh, all of this, you, you go and read the full chapter. You'll see they uh, they are called. The priests are called to come upon the mount, foreshadowing of his eternal priest being called upon the mount. Obadiah 1, 17, 18. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Yaakov shall possess their possessions, and the house of Yaakov shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Hayah has spoken it. So y'all want to hear something crazy with this, man. Um, we're about to read Joel chapter 2. And it's, it, it speaks about uh, that Jacob, Joseph, will be a fire and a flame. And they will devour Esau. We know that this is talking about the 144,000, right? The men of war that come with Mashiach. Well, let's get into the description. Let's get into that description of what this is going to look like. Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet. This is Yom Teruah. What's happening in Yom Teruah? That trumpet blast is a blast of war. Let's read it. It sounded alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people is strong upon the mountains. Who is this? As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people is strong. We just read it. Y'all know, right? Y'all know by now what we get into. The 144,000 upon Mount Zion. There has not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it. This is only happening one time. Even to the years of many generations. A fire devours before them. What we just read, what Jacob and Joseph, this, the house of Joseph will be, flame and fire. And behind them, a flame burneth. Good gracious. I'm going to go back just to clarify. House of Jacob shall be fire in the house of Joseph, a flame in the house of Esau for stumble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. Oh my goodness. Look at these connections. A devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. Why? Because the 144,000 are now taking part of the millennium kingdom and, and they are back take, uh, renewing the earth as the garden of Eden before them. But behind them, a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Let's look down here, Revelation 19. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword and with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty Allah this is what's going on Yasharala. The appearance of horses is 144,000 and of horsemen, so they, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. 
OMG, this is word for word. Who is the stubble? Esau. And what will the 144,000 from Jacob and Joseph do? They shall kindle in them and devour them. The flame of fire that devours the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall be gathered, shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Yasha is a man of war, right? And they shall march everyone on his own ways and they shall Break their rank, not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust a, another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Because they will be as gods. They will be as eternal being, angels. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Remember, he comes like a thief, Yasharala. Good gracious. Man, this is so spot on. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and moon shall be dark. The stars shall withdraw their shining. And Haya shall utter. His voice before his army. The blast of the trumpet before the 144,000. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Adon is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Man. Yasharala, repent for the kingdom of Allahim is at hand. If this doesn't put fear into your being, I don't know what, I don't know what can. I don't know, I don't know, I do not know. So uh, the, the entire book is about him. Every story can have some foreshadowing of the coming of the Son of Man. Every single story. It really blows your mind the more you look into it with that mindset because you can really see it all throughout. And yes, before I continue, you, you brought up a good little precept, Bruce. Let's go to Second Ezra. I don't have this prepared, but I'm gonna read it out loud here. Let's go to Second Ezra. I'm gonna read verse ten of chapter thirteen. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips, a flaming breath. And out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempests. And when we go to the last book in the very end, we're talking about as stubble burning, cast into fire. We see in the very end of the book in verse 77, chapter 16. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and, and covered with iniquity, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. And we see that that initial fire comes through the 144,000 here. That's how they come. Like fire out of the mouth of our Mashiach. That's what Yom Teruah, the prophecies that we are waiting to be fulfilled on Yom Teruah is about. There is the, the shofar blast can be a blast of joy on that day. 
It will be a blast of joy. But it most most definitely will also be a blast of terror. But for both sides, the shofar blast is a declaration of war. Whose side you will be on is up to you right here and right now. And this reminds me of the story in Maccabees chapter, 1 Maccabees chapter 5. So Judas saw that the battle had begun and that the cry of the city went up to, to heaven with trumpets and loud shouts. And he said to the men of his forces, fight today for your brethren. Then he came up behind them in three companies who sounded their trumpets and cried aloud in prayer. Wow. If that don't sound like the day of trumpets, I don't know what does. That's exactly when you hear that last trumpet. This is what this, is what this day is about. Whose side are you on and who are you ready to fight for? And we're going to finish on a good note, though. We're talking about war and terror. But on a good note, Gad the seer, chapter 14. And it came to pass, this is a prophecy from Gad, and it came to pass on the first day of the seventh month. All right, now we're going to verse seven. And Gad, then a, then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of the Adon, three books that contain the records of every man and he read the first book, and it contained the just deeds of his people. And the Most High said, these are granted eternal life. That is the gift that we will be changed into new beings like unto the angels, eternal life. Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout. His people, the shout will be joyful. That's why it says, blessed are the people who know the joyful shout. Oh, Haya, who walk in the light of your countenance. And that light is the path such as the path of the moon, which he has divided from the beginning. There's no togetherness of light and darkness. It's either all light or all dark. So let's be light bearers. Happy Yam Teruah, Yasharala. All praises to our Heavenly Father for sending his son to be King of Kings. Thank y'all for joining me. Happy Yom Teruah, Shabbat Shalom, and Allahim bless. Thank y'all for joining me.